I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And as a way of respecting, honoring, and creating awareness about our capacity to get our village board meetings by acknowledging that New Paltz is on the ancestral land of the Munsee, Estopis, and Laafe people, please check out our agendas and minutes and help us add to our list of ways to support Indigenous communities. I'm going to straight away motion that we move the consent agenda. All in favor? All in favor. And then for the business agenda, I want to add item number one for Juneteenth, item number three for the Hudson River Valley Greenway Grant. And that is it on the business agenda. Is there anything I should be adding to the, the reorg portion? Autumn, or is that? Does that change already? Right or three with my switch on there? I don't know. Take a look. See if it is. Okay. Let's switch. This is the. Yeah. So we can. We can. We we can. Right. I'll, I I can explain what we're doing today versus what we will do, or what the new board will do in January. I move Second. that we accept the business agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Announcements? I'll make um, the family of New Paltz uh, announcement to uh, remind folks that family of New Paltz is always looking for um, donations in season clothing you can always call over there to make sure that the items you have are needed because space is limited but they're also um, looking for cash donations to help folks um, with various different financial needs so um, if you have the means to do so please consider donating to family of new Falls during their open hours i have a couple announcements Anyway. Um, so Narcan and other harm reduction services are available anywhere in Ulster to anyone, thanks to Allenville Regional's Project Rescue Program. And it's super easy. I did it myself. Um, you can text ERH Rescue to 21000. Um, and so like they can hook you up with Narcan, um, like other harm reduction supplies like test kits, snort kits, sex kits, and so on. Um, also, please save this number use it, it's the Never Use Alone hotline, 800-484-3731. Uh, Narcan trainings are always available online through, um, you know, the Office of Community Wellness. Uh, go to opioidpreventionnp.org and follow those instructions. And of course, our free food fridge is always, always operating right outside this building, um, 25 Claddock Hill Avenue. Um, you know, there's food, there's other supplies in there, and there's always need for donations and volunteers to help clean. So for information on how to donate and how to help out, go to billionsofbutterflies.org slash free dash food dash fridge. Any other announcements or hey, go ahead, Stana. Um, I would like to announce um, the celebration of Juneteenth Jubilee that's going to be happening this Sunday and Monday. Um, Sunday, June 18th, uh, Fulton Angel and Jane Cox Day, the New Paltz United Methodist Church at 945. There will be a service and at 4 p.m. there will be a program. And on Monday um, at the New Paltz Rural Cemetery C-section from 12 to 1 o'clock, um, there will be services to um, talk about the elders and folks who are laid to rest there. Um, uh, from 1.30 to 4.30, there will be lunch performances and tours um, based through the lawn at uh, Historic Huguenot Street. Um, there will be speakers, there will be um, a buffet style lunch, there will be a DJ um, and walking tours of the Jacob Winkoop uh, neighborhood and Huguenot Street as well as some other stuff. And there will be um, 
the future home of uh, the Margaret Wade Lewis Center and Oliver House. Um, we're going to be processioning at five o'clock from Historic Huguenot Street over to the Ann Oliver House. And from six to eight at Unison Arts Center, Adam Falcon will be playing. And we hope that as many of you as possible will be able to join in some or all of these wonderful celebrations and commemorations. I've got it. One or two, we have time. Yeah. All yours. Okay. Um, and the uh, Patrick Plesser Economic and Social Justice Scholarship is um, is out there in the world. The deadline is June twenty third at noon. Uh, we'd like to see some persons apply. Please pass the word. If you need any any information, we have information on our website and on our Facebook page. And secondly, starting on June twenty fourth. We'll be doing a freshening up of the three car bay garage of the firehouse. And we're looking for volunteers. We're going to wash it, power wash it, scrub it, and paint it. And we're going to turn it into a multi purpose, multi use and community stance for sports like badminton and uh, pickleball, possibly, and events such as. Uh, and, and events such as pancake breakfasts and all that can happen, even like a Thanksgiving dinner. I think we talked about that. So, um, if you're interested, uh, go to our Facebook page or to our web page, and you'll get more information. I'll have to see you there. I have one more thing. Um, we want everybody to vote, um, and early voting starts on the 17th, which is Saturday, and um, goes up until the uh, primary, which is on. 27th. So we, if you are registered Democrat, I don't know that there are any Republican stuff going on, but if you're a registered Democrat, um, you know, get more information on who's running and get out to vote and tell everybody you know to get out to vote. I have one more announcement because it still is Pride Month. Um, I want to share that tomorrow night um, I'm hosting the Pride themed. Um, uh, open mic night at Unison um, up on Mountain Rest Road. And so all are welcome. Um, it's from 6.30 until nine o'clock. And um, Unison folks have let me know that they are so willing to help shuttle people up, you know, from, you know, the center of the village um, and bring it back. So if anyone wanted to attend, but felt like um, transportation is a barrier, let me know um, in any of the ways that you know how. I hope to see people there. There will be a really good appearance from one of my favorite drag queens. Yeah. Okay, so public comment. Does anyone here want to make a public comment on any topic? Do we have any online public comments? One in the audience? Oh, sorry, I didn't see your arm. Come on up. You could uh, sit with us at the table. Well, mostly I just wanted to uh, could introduce, you just, do, could introduce, you just introduce yourself first. That's what I'm about to do. <laughs> My name is Kate Himes and I'm vice president of the Margaret Wade, the board of, of trustees of the Margaret Wade Lewis Center. And I just wanted to um, introduce myself. So you would know I'm working. I've done, uh, we've been working with Autumn here around the DASNI funding and um, Stana has been helpful to us uh, <laughs> around uh, a number of things. And just to um, express my own appreciation for the support that the village has given to uh, the project and the work that we're undertaking. It is our honor and pleasure. And um, I think it's our honor and pleasure to work with you on this. And once we get to that portion of the, um, of the business agenda number one, Juneteenth resolution, I will read it and um, I would ask you to stay and help me make any changes. Okay. Us make any changes. <laughs> thank thank you. you. for Thank you for volunteering to be on the board. Any other public comment? Any public comment that we received? 
Okay. So then let's jump right into Juneteenth. I'm going to ask you. To... Yeah. <laughs> I told you the first thing I'm going to do. All right. Um, so we're working on a resolution. I'm going to read what we've got currently. And um, we're, we've been working on some changes that Kate has asked for and will continue to. So resolution of the village of New Paltz Board of Trustees memorializing Juneteenth and recognizing the New Paltz Juneteenth Jubilee. Whereas nearly nine decades after our nation's founding and more than two years after President Lincoln signed the Emancipation, Emancipation Proclamation, enslaved Americans in Galveston, Texas finally received word that they were free from bondage, beginning the tradition of Juneteenth. And whereas June 19, 1865, began a constitutional process that is still unfolding, which attempts to give freedom meaning for every, I'm sorry, for citizens of African descent with the rights and privileges therein. And Juneteenth is now officially a national day of independence through which every American is invited to celebrate our strides toward an ever more perfect union and whereas the nation's original sin of slavery continues to shape our public policies and contribute to the ongoing struggles that disproportionately affect African Americans, and Juneteenth serves as a vital reminder of the brutality, hardships, and generational trauma slavery embedded in Black life and the ensuing moral stain that impacts every citizen of the nation. And whereas the legal community and New York State more broadly have too long held ourselves to a false innocence in regards to the evils of slavery and the ensuing centuries of continuing racism and ignorant to the foundation of black Americans play, uh, black Americans have played in building this community and therefore be it resolved that the village of New Paltz commits to commemorating Juneteenth as a day of reflection upon our unique place in the national legacy of black slavery um, and its ongoing aftermath, unflinchingly naming our faults and continuously seeking out and lifting up the stories of those African-Americans who were integral to shaping our community and be it further resolved that the village of New Paltz to, commits to commemorating the celebration of Juneteenth as a day of black joy, celebrating the vibrant contributions black life continually makes to our national, national culture, celebrating black resilience, perseverance and our unflinching commit, commitment to freedom and justice and be it further resolved that beginning with this year's Juneteenth Jubilee, we will continue to hold Juneteenth as a day of black joy and liberation. I think that this is, I meant to cut one of these <laughs> <laughs> in which we might all take part from which we might all learn thereby fostering opportunities for every person to be emancipated from the shackles of our racist past and present. Be it result, further resolved that the village clerk is directed to send a copy of this resolution to US Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, US Senator Charles Schumer, U.S. Congressman Pat Ryan, Governor Kathy Hochul, State Senator Michelle Hinchy, State Assembly Member Sarah Hanna Shrestha, Ulster County Executive Jen Metzger, City of Kingston Mayor Steve Noble, Ulster County Legislative Chair Tracy Bartels, Ulster County Legislator Trisha Bowen, Ulster County Legislator Megan Sperry, and the New Paltz Town Board. We were still working on cutting in, but I ran out of time and had to get here. <laughs> So um, would you like to look at what I've gotten on my phone so you can tell me where you want me to cut or? I, I, I couldn't respond in that way at the, okay. at the moment. Um, I think you captured a number of the things that I raised in response to the original version. So that feels, yeah. Thank you. Um, so let's combine this. Yeah. Two paragraphs yeah, yeah, yeah. that look like yeah, they're trying yeah, they to be are, combined. Yeah, that's what happened. Um, celebrating the vibrant contributions, Black life continually makes to national culture. Black resilience, perseverance, and our unflinching commitment to freedom and, uh, and justice, and get rid of this. And we'll just go to this. Or was it this one? No, we're keeping that. Yeah, yeah, no, it's like these two are. Wait, but this is also unflinchingly. Unflinching yeah. is. Yeah, yeah it's used twice. One time yeah. it should be deleted. Yeah. Oh, here, just do it on my. Sorry, I didn't realize you weren't there. Yeah, he is on it. Sorry. Um. Tell me about the things I'm hoping to do. 
Question. So it's not a material change, it's just uh, an edit. Yeah, well, yeah, they're just editorial so, changes here. Yeah. Sure. So do, do we want to um, go ahead and, and move to, to recognize the resolution? With the slight tweaks, or don't do we have to tweak it before we recognize we, it? No, we're not changing it the, be subject the spirit. To, to okay. Yeah. All right. Then I'm you guys can you know triple check it yep. after the meeting, which Great. I would highly recommend. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so I move that we pass this resolution. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank, thank you. Kate. Thanks for your thank you. Thank you. <laughs> don't 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 leave, leave yet. <laughs> So we also have um, the Design Review Board slash Historic Preservation Commission has created an application to landmark the Ann Oliver House, the future uh, Margaret Wade Lewis Center. Um, I have never sat on this board where we have landmarked a property. I think there are a total of 12 in the, the village currently. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm pretty unfamiliar with with the process. Um, so because th this language, Michael, did you have something to to add about? Because you guys discussed this last night. So as far as you understand, we don't have to take a formal action to recognize. Sounds good. Um, Will there be a placard in front or in the side? And how does that fit into plans that go? I, I know with the other 12 or 13 yeah. existing uh, recognized homes, there, there is a placard. So I imagine that would, uh, and this obviously would not happen until the, the structure is renovated too. But um, I think it makes a good deal of sense to take this action. <laughs> there's two kinds of markers there's a whole another process that you go through for a pomeroy marker which is the blue one yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. right is this is yeah. this is just a local this designation is so i think what we should do is once once the renovation has happened we discuss it with the center and we do something that they feel comfortable with i defer to the community who should be running it <laughs> and that's run it. Well, uh, at this point in time, you are working very hard to make that day come soon. Um, so, but yes, that would probably be best is once we have some ideas about the renovation and how and when that's going to happen. All right, so we have three grants floating out um, in mm -hmm. existence right now. We're waiting for um, were to see whether we received the Restore New York grant. Um, we've not received official notice, yes or no. Mm -hmm. It seems like the um, the award that former Assembly Member Cahill's office um, was trying to provide for for renovation. Uh, that application with with DASNY is moving forward, as well as the application that. Senator Hinchy's office uh, has helped move forward. So mm -hmm. of those three, two we're feeling fairly optimistic about. The third, we continue to have our fingers crossed. Okay, now there will be issues as those materialize that we're going to need to sit down and have a discussion about, because my understanding is that both of them are matching funds. The not ones. not the not the DASNY ones. Not from, okay. Not I've from been the, told uh, that they would match it. Only only the Restore New York okay. requires matching funds, okay. and 
if everything aligns perfectly, you could potentially use the DASNY awards, the capital grants from the representatives in Albany as the local match for Restore New York. So that's something that we can explore. Okay. But I'm a little nervous about the Restore New York grant because there was a big announcement um, where IPARC 87 was the recipient of a, of a large Restore New York award. And we have not heard anything yet about our local project. Mm. Well, there actually is another grant also that the village applied for. We did the ap actual application. It yes. is a Preserve New York Preservation League grant. Mm. What was the dollar amount for that? It's not. It's not a large dollar amount. It's a small dollar amount. It does the initial uh, historical assessment of the structure to assess restoration. Very good. And yeah. how to pursue restoration. So lots of lots of things in the works. Lots of things to mm -hmm. be um, optimistic about, so we can finally stabilize and begin restoration of of the home. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. So we'll, let's find out for certain what the process is, uh, what we need to do to, um, if we need to take any action uh, mm -hmm. regarding regarding the HBC's uh, designation from Monday night. Maybe there's not, but um, we'll probably have to report it. Okay. It occurs to me, Tom um, Olson did say that passing this landmark designation should um, open up opportunities for enhanced grant applications. So yes, in yeah. that regard, if you have some outstanding grants and you want to amend the, the just let the offices know that we passed that on the useful. But yeah. Sounds good. Okay, um, then I, I don't think there's anything else for us to do regarding this topic. Okay. So we can finally say thanks and not you back up again <laughs> unless you wanted to chime in about the water treatment plant no um, no 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 thank you there so is much. there's one other june team related thing and that's the permit is it is that on your taken care of taken care of yeah. good right. okay autumn we got We're done. <laughs> both the village and the town took care of it it's all done i spoke with the police chief about it we're all good okay and um, the village offered to have the insurance for when we're in front of the NRA and for when oh. we're moving from one spot to another. <laughs> oh, okay. Because we had contacted Stuart about it, and the person we were working with, uh, one of, because it's actually going to be his drummers from uh, Center for Creative Education, they contacted Stuart and submitted their. Oh, okay. Their insurance. Okay, because I had to when I applied for the permit, I had to, act, uh, you know, do an uh, yeah. insurance, and so you guys don't have insurance, so I did mine. And Etty just asked me if we could do it on ours, and I'm like, already done. Well, <laughs> it's doubly insured at this point. So <laughs> we're <laughs> Maybe we're doing the walk from there to there, and then they're doing the on the space. I don't know. Yeah, whatever. It's, it's all good. It's Share the love. Okay, so the next item on this business agenda relates to the award we received some time ago from Hudson River Valley Greenway, and this is to create a, a stub um, from the bottom of Henry W to the rail trail. And this was basically left leftover Empire State trail money that Greenway was going to make sure we had access to to create this stuff. So a little bit ago, we put out bid docs and we had a, a low bid and that work would only include really the, the complicated intersection portion of this project. But what also needs to get done is to make sure that the, the small stub trail that is actually on Roddy Serta's property, uh, where the Serta family had provided us with an, with an easement so that um, folks trying to get from the bottom of Henry W to the rail trail could get there. So that 
that portion, believe it or not, still needs to be designed and those bid docs need to go out separately. Um, so we have a proposal from all to planning to get that work done because they were instrumental in helping with the intersection portion of this project. So I move that we accept the uh, proposal from Alta to pay them $16,000 to design and orchestrate this portion of the, the process. Second. Uh, any questions? All in favor? Aye. And the next item is related to the sewer plant, AKA the wastewater treatment plant down on Huguenot Street. So we were contacted by DEC staff. They're doing a microplastic study um, at various treatment plants within the state. They contacted us uh, about including some equipment so they could monitor how much plastic all of us are ingesting on a regular basis. Um, and this is basically just uh, formally recognizing that we're gonna be working with the DEC um, and we'll have an agreement between our village and the DEC subject to review by our village engineer and village attorney. Um, but I've already vetted this and had conversations with DEC staff and the um, sewer plant operator so that should be um an interesting study when does this begin i don't know the date but but uh relatively soon why well now we're testing testing wastewater for covid and variants and now we're testing for microplastics which is pretty interesting yeah yeah it'll be university of buffalo right that's doing the whole study mm -hmm. and putting out a report so yeah. pretty cool DEC knows that we're generally a, a willing participant um, when it comes to asking to uh, include some monitoring equipment at our water plant or steam plant. So, um, so I, I move that we go ahead and um, and uh, accept this motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. And we also have this draft law. So we got feedback from Pulp, which I thought was was useful. Um, so this this law has to do with if there's an apartment complex that's being constructed, or if there's a property where we're adding uh, three or more buildings that the property would be required to put in their own master meter uh, in a pit, so water could be monitored and measured closer to the property line as opposed to within a building. So this is comparable to the project that we did at SUNY New Paltz where we el eliminated having to read all 53 meters on campus, but have nine master meters. You think it's a best practice um, in, in, you know, especially apartment complexes. So property owners could continue to monitor water consumption within individual units, but this would, uh, allow us to make sure that we're getting accurate reads and make sure that uh, property owners are motivated to deal with any service leaks as, as soon as possible. Um, and then the feedback that we got from Pulp was just in terms of language. And, and uh, I feel like as it's currently worded, we're fine because it's not like any of this would happen retroactively. Uh, the word immediately was, was what, Lori was commenting on, but um, I think it makes sense that we would use that word because it's only for new construction, new projects. So, you know, there would be plenty of runway for, for a property owner to, to figure out how to get this done. So I, I would like to move. Okay, so. Did we get any other feedback? Okay. I, I move that we close the public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. I move that we adopt the local law. Second. Any further discussion, questions? Just a lot of gratitude yeah. to Lori um, and everyone at the Public Utility Lodge Project for giving us that little bit of insight. Um, makes me feel really good about moving forward with this. 
if, do we know if this is a large financial um, commitment to, to? We just we we just required the county to do it when they put in. Um, so we, we provided uh, the county with municipal water down at the new veterans cemetery on Plains Road, mm -hmm. and um, it's. Uh, uh, I think it's just it's just definitely a best practice. I don't have a dollar amount in terms of how much it costs, but um, they were uncomfortable with using copper for a service line, but they had no objections to putting in a pit meter. So I'm guessing that it was okay. Um, all in favor? Aye. And then the next item is, uh, an update that we need to schedule A and schedule B. So we have really solid drafts um, for those new laws, but Autumn and I have been brainstorming about a best practice. And that's why I'm glad that Michael Zeller is here because I feel like the way we used to do a lot of these things pre-COVID, um, instead of just our staff, reviewing things. I think it makes sense to get a couple of planning board members, village board members, community members, and even for something like this, which I don't think is terribly complicated, but just to sit as a committee and and discuss these updated schedules. Um, you know, I feel like post COVID, you know, this is this is what we need to return to doing. And uh, when I was talking with Autumn about who I would want, I said, Michael, because I know you've we, we've twisted your arm and you've served on committees like this. And, you know, what's good about this kind of committee is right. It's it's like a one or two meeting thing. Um, but you you understand the uh, the terrain. So. Any who else wants to volunteer from our village board, I'm going to ask the planning board chair to add a name or two and I'm officially asking Michael to to serve on this committee can we think of anyone else that we we would want to include what do you think Michael any suggestions uh, this committee is for specifically the, the code you have in front of you or to no it's, it's just for, for it's just for 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 schedule A, which is like the use schedule, and schedule B, which is basically a summary of all the codes. Which okay, right. Yeah, E is mostly a, uh, right. it's a summary of all of the uses and density issues, I think, if I remember right. It's, it's, it's like side yards yeah. and, and density right. and number of stories. Right. It's the bulk table. Yeah. So I. Oh, specifically for those two. Yeah, that, that's all we're trying to do is we want to make sure that our schedule A and B are are re reliable because what the trouble that we ran into is that our zoning code was was updated, but a few of the items in the updated code did not make their way into schedule B. So. And I was like, well, that'd be cool. Can we just throw schedule B away? And I was told by the attorneys we cannot. Hey Tim, do we want to ask Michael up here so he can be heard? Or... Um, I, I he okay. he said he's in. Okay. <laughs> you nodded your head. I saw it. <laughs> you but you held oh, up a number. <laughs> Can, you can we we can sleep on it and no. let's get something on the calendar. Let's get something on the calendar in the next few weeks. Okay. We were thinking Rich Sudo would, would be good because I think he had been asking questions from the planning board table about some of these things. But the use schedule is a, a, a tricky one too. You know, it's yeah. um mm. all right. Um, so the next couple of items. So, Michael, we got a letter from you about <laughs> the use schedule and the historic district. And then we got a, a follow up note from the design review board, HPC, uh, echoing your letter. Did you want to 
come and speak with us about this topic at all or anyone else, you know, feel free to come to the table. Um, right, so the letter that I sent was as a neighbor of 181 Huguenot Street and um, hearing the situation they were in and, and then talking actually with Rick Golden about this uh, and what a use variance means and and how how they can or how a board like the ZBA can or cannot give them. And um, so it occurred to me that maybe one of the alternatives would be for you all to consider revising the zoning code, uh, which I think is section 212.13 that would under the historic district would under special permit uses, add instructional uses as an option. Um, that would enable the folks at 181 or anybody else in the future to consider going to the planning board for a special use permit for um, instructional uses. And um, that is based on what I heard that the building inspector said that this particular use would fall into that category rather than educational use as defined in our code. Instructional use as opposed to educational use. And, right, exactly. So <clears throat> educational use is a special use permit in the Stark District, but he felt at least for the moment that um, what they're doing didn't meet the definition of educational use that we have in 212.5, but would meet instructional use. But since it's currently prohibited, I'm requesting that you all consider that. I should say, when I submitted the letter, as I started to say, I was just a neighbor, but after Monday, I'm sitting here now actually at representing the HPC as well. Um, so I can speak to the, the support that they provided. And I think the relevant things in addition to what's in the letter is that, um, again, at Rick Golden's suggestion, you might wanna consider if you do take this up that, putting some guardrails in terms of defining what kinds of instructional uses that might be more narrowly defined than what's in our definitions might be appropriate for the Stark District. And we talked about, as in, in, in the HBC, we talked about things that are relevant, such as um, historic doing instructional uses that would focus on um, the history of agriculture or historic practices such as renovation of historic homes or renovation of historic materials, you know, furniture and things like that. So that in the future, if somebody was interested in doing a school elsewhere within the historic district, they would have to focus on things that are appropriate for the district as opposed to just any instruction. Um, just something for you all to consider. So that's all I have. Do you think it would make sense if we were to make that change, why wouldn't you apply it to all residential districts? Um, right, that's a good question, because I guess instructional use is not allowed in residential districts in general, except maybe as a home business. I'm not, I right, don't know home where- Home business is different, it's a person somewhere. Right, and I don't know where those two overlap. Um, it's a good question, I don't know, I haven't thought about it. And why not continue down the path where the applicant is before the ZBA already? Um, well, pursuing if, the use variance. Um, I felt like this was something that could be done in parallel. Um, sure, like during the, the, the committee work for the um, Schedule A, for instance. Sure. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, if you all felt that it was better to wait and let the ZBA's process play out before you commit. You know, I also, I also a little bit, personally, I'm a little bit uncomfortable like, with changing code. You know, like it feels like spot zoning, right. um, you know, to address a particular project or application. Understood. Like I it's think it's a tricky precedent. Right. Um, I, my response to that is that I thought I was thinking about that in writing the letter to you all. And I felt like, and especially after talking with the HPC, 
with the, my fellow members on the HPC that this could be advantageous, not just for this particular project, which I see as precipitating the issue, um, because up until then I was completely unaware of that this wasn't an allowed use, for example. But I could imagine, for example, that the historic Huguenot Street might decide, HHS might decide that they want to start a school or have a, a summer program where they want to do start, you know, teach people, carpenters, how to do historic preservation, or they might want to teach homeowners how to, if they have historic homes, how to properly do stuff. And they wouldn't be able to do that under the current code. But they do various workshops already. I wonder how that is permitted. True, I don't know. I mean, they have the kids there too. Yeah, the kid stuff is- Educational, not- Might be educational, I don't know. Um, yeah, they do do it, workshops. Maybe that doesn't fall under the, I mean, I don't know that they even get a permit for that. So maybe that falls under a different umbrella. And I mean, I feel like this is a this is a complicated example also because of the conservation easement. Right. So the conservation easement, as I understand it, it speaks to the property is allowed to have ag use right. that ties to what New York State wants to see as far as ag, like growing things, selling things, you know, connected to right. <clears throat> And my understanding, and these folks can speak much better to that than I, is that prior to committing to the lease on this property, the folks at the Walker Valley Land Trust basically felt that this was an appropriate use and that it was tied to agriculture. Otherwise, I don't think it might. Do you want to join us? Well, oh. Yeah, why don't you do this so, so that we can pick up the audio? Um. I don't have the letter from Christine Duval. I'm trying to share who you are for oh. everybody. Excuse me. I'm Claudia Keel, and I am um, one of the directors of Arbor by Day School of Herbalism, traditional herbalism. And Diana, is there an Amber, um, lives at the house and works and with us um, with her family. But just to answer that question, um, Christine DeBauer, the um, is executive director of the Walk Hill Land Trust and enforces the easement, and you all probably know her very well. And um, there's been other uh, um, interest in doing different kinds of educational work on the whole property, um, and that's not been allowed according to the easement. But when we came in as an herb school, and we, because there's a there's a there's agricultural work as an herb school, and I can go into much more detail. Um, there was a lot that was brought into the ZBA meeting yesterday about that. Um, but at any rate, she wrote a letter and gave it into the ZBA directly to them, um, affirming that, that we fit in with the agricultural use as an herb school. So, so is there a way for us to, like, is that what you're saying? Can we make that be the use? Or there, there was Rick, Golden had an so no Rick didn't speak to the his comment was more generic about the way New York State established when they this is typical for him the way they established zoning once they did that in order to provide variances they derived area variances and use variances and they specifically made use variances a relatively high bar in order to get an area variance is relatively low. Um, so the question for the CBA is, um, does this particular application meet all of the criteria so they could consider granting it? And there were some people last night from reading the draft minutes who spoke to that, who felt that they did, um, at least one person actually spoke directly to that. Um, so I guess it will be a question of whether their CBA attorney and the Majority of the ZBA board feel that that can meet that criteria and they can substantiate it. And if they do that, then that's fun. So, so I think if we're going to a, a few different things. So, with the conservation easement, um, I think an opinion from the Department of 
of state ags and markets would be really important, right? Like we would need New York State to opine on whether they feel that this is an ag use, right? Like I don't feel like locally the village board or the Walker Valley Land Trust, we, we don't have expert opinion about what's ag or not. I, I feel, you know, especially because this has a conservation easement and it speaks to an ag use is permitted, other commercial uses are not permitted. But I'm not sure if, okay, let me make sure I understand what you're saying. So on the one hand, yeah, I mean, I think I, I would respectfully disagree. I think the Walker Valley Land Trust does have the professional expertise to, to address agricultural issues, but an additional opinion. I, so I would, I would ask them in addition to asking the state. Well, the conservation even speaks to like ags and markets, like yes. which is which is which is a specific state. branch of state. Yeah. But the other thing I wanted to say was that the conserva conservation easement <clears throat> a lot makes clear what things are allowed and what are generally not allowed on the property, but it doesn't supersede any thing that's allowed by local zoning. So if I wanted to put a bed and breakfast there, I could go and request a special use permit to put a bed and breakfast in that building. That's a, that's according to our code. And I don't believe it. I don't, I, 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 don't, I don't think that that's no, a possibility think, at oh, all. So think, I, I think conservation easements trump local zoning. Okay, well then I, you may well be right. I guess I don't actually know for certain. If so. the conservation easement trumps the local zoning and the people that who enforce that yeah. with legal advice accepts us there, then there's no issue. Yeah, there's that actually there. is a good argument for mm -hmm. they don't even need to go to the ZBA. Precisely. Oh, it's, okay. No, 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 no. I, I, they, they would not need to go to the ZBA. Then we could make it clear within our zoning in terms of of a use right and arguably they wouldn't even but i i, I but I, I think if we're going to entertain that having having state ag say yes. that this is an ad this is considered an acceptable ag use that this way we are insulated from mm -hmm. how oh, conservation easements are okay and we also want to farm you know and we just started that process we couldn't go further because of that. I, yeah i think it's about farming and selling like that's that's what right and, this is, and that is something want. they would like as a school that is something they would specifically like to be doing so that that's as that's the ability. interpretation that you're asking for from ag and market yeah okay so how would they how would they proceed <laughs> no but just to sort of clarify there is an aspect of diversification within um, farms being able to survive, that there's education. Um, there's no, you know, they have education through apprenticeships, they have education in numerous ways. And so farming is connected with education and how to farm um, in numerous ways. But so I don't wanna, you know, even though we will farm and we do have that intention, the part of it is also teaching about how to farm and herbs. So is there a process that you're aware of for getting that sort of opinion state? I, I'm not. Okay. So we can explore that. Yeah, I would imagine calling, yeah, calling yeah. them. I, and like I'm the, happy to do the research. Yeah. And if you get stuck, um, just like I would call Senator Hinchy's office, Assemblymember okay. Stress's office, because um, they're they have direct contacts to these different agencies. Right. Um that they might have better luck with. Thanks. So right. Let me know. Actually, yeah. I, I think that this is a, a more defensible path as opposed to, you know, you and I both mm -hmm. know that sure. Rick Golden can explain backwards and forwards mm -hmm. why yeah. use variances should be a very high bar. Yeah. No, I think so, this is an excellent idea. Yeah. This is a really good idea. So, okay. So I'm taking that as the subtext you want to hold off on doing any change to the zoning at this point? Well, any change to the zoning would take no, I months, it would take anyways, months yeah. in any event, yeah. right? But but be, but not even start down that road yet. But pursue these other avenues first. 
then I feel like if we if we knew that well, especially for this property, mm -hmm. then as we're updating uses, yeah, we can deal with that. Okay. Yeah, I mean it's it's actually just coincidence that we're doing Schedule A at the same time that we're having this conversation. <laughs> right, right. Okay. But uh, those things would go hand in hand. It is really interesting though, like you know, looking at the code, how like so, like things like herbalism doesn't come up once, like in any code you know at all and i never knew until you point this out this whole difference between education and yeah no, instruction so instruction I, it's really interesting yeah. yeah and the point that you're highlighting is that you do have to teach farmers how to farm right yeah. that's part of working on a farm is you learn stuff so you can farm right yeah, I, yeah exactly and, and be, they're teaching people to be new farmers as well on yeah. the farms because we need more farmers. These are skills that fast meaning our exactly our world. Let's just get it buttoned up. Yeah. All right. Well, thank so, you. Yeah. Just the point is that which I appreciate you make, bringing up is that er, there's so many things that don't fit into code when it was written. You know, and I understand that, but Erblin doesn't fit neatly into instruction or education, but that Corey thought it fit better into instruction and therefore um, we needed to apply for use variance and that's how we started this whole process. Yeah, the use variance is a, a blunt instrument. <laughs> well, and, and there's a reason why it's right. I, I mean, I, I don't think any of us in this room have seen a use variance granted in coupons. Yeah. Area variance, different. Yeah. yeah, no, this is very, thank you, it's a good idea. So, all right, thanks. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. And I signed when friends were coming around looking for signatures, I signed. <laughs> yeah, I signed a pride. A pride, yes, I signed a pride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the next item is um we did we close the hearing for the to update the uh the location of these handicapped spots? We did, right? Because this was kind of a housekeeping exercise or just making sure that the um the address is in front of these parking spots was correct, Autumn. So I, I move that. We did it. Um, I move that we adopt the, the draft law to amend the handicapped parking spot locations. All in favor? Aye. I move items eight and nine. For bills and claims 5C and 6N. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And I move the treasurer's request to modify the 2022 23 fiscal year budget for cost overalls. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. PB liaison update? Uh, no uh, PB meeting for me last week. I had a conflict. I did meet with the Ulster County Planning Board. There were no village applications before the board. Um, I wanted to discuss with you, Tim, at another time about CFA funds being implemented, specifically intended use plan uh, that's within that fund. And uh, it was a great deal of review of what's the funding that's available now. And I'll get that some to the village board when I receive it. So our plan for this season's CFA yeah. is to apply to the Environmental Facilities Corp to get engineering and planning grant money so we can study um, the wastewater treatment plant regarding location and resiliency. So from what I understand, that should be a relatively easy grant to receive because we can't get on the intended use plan for the sewer plant 
until we have done that study. And that was explained to me by this woman who was like super resourceful, who works for the governor's office of storm recovery. She, she had been trying to get us new Gozer money for the sewer plant. And she said that she couldn't to harden the sewer plant. And she said she couldn't secure that money until we were on the intended use plan. But we can't get on the intended use plan until we have a plan or until we've performed a study. Uh, next item, ZBA liaison update. So I went to the police commission because I had never been to them and they both meet at the same time. And that's the change that we're making. But I do have the um, draft minutes. Um, so of course, as we know, there was a whole long conversation with a lot of comments about the Arbor Body School at 181. Um, the application needs to be referred to the Ulster County Planning Board. Um, and uh, attorney Emily Stevenson notes that an environmental assessment form is needed as well. Uh, there's an area of variance for 137 North Chestnut. Um, so they had a public hearing and they're gonna send that to the county. And they reviewed uh, the use variance for 181. They did, they're, they're just sending it for, to the county because they have yeah, yeah. Uh, and the area, the area variance for 137 North Chestnut was to send to the planning board as well. And 145 North Chestnut. They also get like a public hearing for their area the variance. So I think 137 and 145 are in the same boat. They both are looking for area variances. Yeah, Trail Link and um, KEF. So Trail Link is the former gateway right. property. Mm -hmm. And then 145 is the former Agway property. Correct. Right. Um, so what's interesting, and this is a conversation that we should have as a board, and we've been deliberating on this uh, for some time with staff in terms of our language regarding side yards says that a side yard maxes out at 15 feet. Um, but there is language that says that the planning board has some discretion, but discretion should have parameters, right? Mm -hmm. Like they shouldn't be able to do whatever kind of side yard just because. Um, so in one could argue that 137 and 145 don't even necessarily need to go to the ZBA for <laughs> variances because the planning board would have discretion. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe the planning board was looking for our feedback mm -hmm. about what does that mean or why is it worded the way that it is. And having reviewed the site plans, I feel like both of these projects it makes sense that they would have side yards greater than 15 feet. Like 137 has a wetland area and then a mm -hmm. buffer between their driveway and the wetland. Mm -hmm. And you look at the site plan and it, it, it feels logical. Yeah. Um, so I guess we have to figure out, do we need to change the code? Because I would prefer not. 137 is the one with the wetland, 145, is the former Agway. So what they have is the two one ways yeah. and they just want a driveway, even if it's a one way, they just want it to be a little bit wider. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you want to max out side yards if there's nothing there, but maybe you would make the side yard greater than 15 feet if it's accommodating something like a driveway. So it's not like the building is right on the driveway. Mm -hmm. Right, maybe mm -hmm. you put in a walking path or mm -hmm. uh, um, take it to the ranch house. Well, <laughs> right, not at 145, but at 127, no, that's the plan, or yeah. just to go outside and not get run over by a car in mm -hmm. your driveway. Um, so 
you know, it does seem like there's room to interpret flexibility on the side yards, but I believe the planning board was looking for a response from our board. As to whether it was more them or the ZBA? No, not about ZBA stuff at all. More about what was the code's intention. Mm -hmm. Just that if the code says that the PB has flexibility or the ability to interpret. We need parameters. I got it. But I don't necessarily want to rewrite code. Right. I want to do public hearings. I don't want no, to. Right. right. But we, we want to we want to somehow memorialize the fact that you can interpret if there are reasons. And maybe this is it. Maybe it's like because we have precedent now with two examples. Mm -hmm. Like we're giving you more space than 15 because of a wetland. We're giving you more mm -hmm. space than 15 because you have um, a driveway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, what do you think, Alex? Well, it's interesting because it's like um it's nuisance characteristics. That's the thing mm -hmm. that's you know up to um some you know interpretation, I guess. Like that's interesting. I, I want to take a look at what um just there's so much going on with like zoning reinterpretations in light of you know the housing smart communities program yeah. countywide yeah so i'm just curious what you know is going on with other communities and what you know kai and dennis and mm -hmm. county would say mm -hmm. on this end you know through the lens of you know right now okay like what is a nuisance characteristic yeah. you know and when we're talking about such housing things. where'd you get that phrase from oh um Eco. Uh, Is this a characteristic? Did you read that? Side or? yards, yeah. Where does it say nuisance characteristic? Oh, there it is. Yeah, other uses uses. From nuisance characteristics. So Ooh. that's anything that's not a one or two family dwelling. So it's you know the twelve point five feet per side per side, except if abutting a residence or residential district, then the planning board may. That's the may mm -hmm. require up to 12.5 feet of additional space for each yard to protect adjacent uses from nuisance characteristics. So the plane board has that may, but their trigger is the nuisance characteristic, which is what does that mean? But it's only 12 and a half feet. Up to. Well, that's mm -hmm. not much. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that so that doesn't that doesn't account for the wetland. Yeah. The wetland area is, is really quite large. Mm -hmm. Oh, I didn't. I didn't realize that it it limited the amount. Yeah. Did you know that, Autumn? That's a conversation we this need. This is one way to drive. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that that works. That works with the buffer between, like, if you have 15 feet for the one way, and you have another 12 and a half feet, so you don't feel like you're smushed up against the building. That's cool, right? You have 27 and a half feet for a one way. Um, but that does not work for what's going on at 137 with their wetland. Okay, so here, does our wetlands law have any? We don't have a wetlands law. But oh, it's a town. I used to be on the town planning board, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we're within the town, so. I don't even know that it's a, 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 it's a officially designated wetland. I think it's like a drainage soil that was okay. just man-made. Okay. We should double check that though. Okay. What? Like what? What is a wetland like? Has changed so much in the past few few years mm -hmm. with advanced, um, you know, finally like definitions mm -hmm. in the state mm -hmm. level. But my understanding of what's going on is is that both of these applicants are just taking it upon themselves to get these area variances, so they don't even necessarily need the planning board. So in mm -hmm. some ways, they got it covered without mm -hmm. the PB or the VB doing mm -hmm. anything on this topic. Yeah, it's interesting. Each um, each each district um, actually has a an up to different mm -hmm. amounts. Um, there's like a limited size amount, so I don't know if I was even on the right one. But each one has like the same plan yeah. board may consider up to and then a certain amount um, right. with the nuisance characteristic. So I'm fine with like this is a conversation to be continued. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, what is the property? I'm oh, sorry. Nope, go ahead. 
I was just curious, the property to the right, if you're facing the old Agway, it, it looks like a brown saloon. Yeah, there's a house there. When I was a kid, it was a, uh, a car rental lot. No, it's, it's vacant. It's totally yeah. vacant now. Yeah, it's I know. It's been vacant for decades. It, but it's not this. It, it's not the ad. I mean, between the house. It's not the same no. house. It's no. separately owned property. Separate property. Oh, I see. Yeah, the Agway lot is basically what's already demarcated. Um, okay, so the other thing on this topic is um, for the next six months, I'll be the ZBA liaison this way, Stan, I can um, go to the police commission. So we're gonna just officially make that change. And then for the, the reorg agenda, so this is super- Do you want to speak about that or no? Oh, oh yeah. sure, sorry. <laughs> So excited yeah. talking about side yard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they referred it to the Ultra County Planning Board and they um they classify it as a type two under speaker. And, and I think uh, that's it. Okay, I'm gonna Yeah, they start talking more about the educational permits and blah blah blah, but we already discussed. I'm going to jump ahead to the reorg agenda. So this is this is super interesting. So because we changed the date of our elections, that we also need to change uh, when we do reorg. So we have not done reorg um, since last June. You know, we typically would do it annually, but since this will be the first year where we have elections in November and then new electeds taking office Jan one, our plan is to have the reorg at the first meeting in January, which in 2024 will be January 10th. Mm -hmm. um, however, there are some things that we need to update uh, for these next six months. Mm -hmm. So that is what's on this abbreviated reorg agenda this evening. So it doesn't include like the, um, the, the liaison posts, like those things like that will just stay as is. Except for our our, our little, our little adjustment. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's almost like separate from reorg stuff. Like mm -hmm. we could have done that last month or next month, right? Yeah. Um, so okay. that's why we're doing this. I think the other um, interesting point of information too is that we are not changing our fiscal year. Our fiscal year will continue to start on June 1, but we are changing when we do reorg. And we're thinking that the important thing with the, the reorg date is that you do need to connect it to when folks take office, mm -hmm. right? Whereas with the fiscal year, it, it, it's a heavier lift to make that change um, and, it, and it's fine right mm -hmm. where it is. Okay, so I'm gonna move that we uh, advance this partial reorg agenda. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then I think that's I think that is that is it. Did we miss anything, Autumn? So we don't have to schedule the new reorg meetings for the 10th or that's part of what we just did, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's the yeah. Uh, that's no, I, yeah. That's mm -hmm. what I thought. I just we had ones and two degrees here and then we have a motion to adjourn. Adjourned. <laughs>